Hello and welcome to Roving Report, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Lumpen Vishum and the highlights of today's program are Prime Minister expresses hope for brighter future of Nagaland after signing of peace accord with NSC and IM. Union ministers review situation in flood hit Manipur. Issues concerning Northeastern people discussed at MPs Forum in New Delhi. And sporting events held in Assam to tap potential of young players. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured his total commitment towards the development of the Naga people after the signing of peace accord with NSC and IM at capital New Delhi in his presence. The signing of the historic deal with the largest Naga insurgent group, NSC and IM, marks a successful conclusion of years of deliberations over the Naga political issue. We have a report. In a major breakthrough, the government of India has signed a peace accord with the National Socialist Council of Nagaland Isaac Muiva faction, bringing to an end decades-long dialogue on the Naga political issue. The landmark peace treaty was signed in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. While the government's interlocutor for Naga talks, R.N. Ravi, signed on behalf of the government, Thungalang Muiva represented the NSC and IM. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, Senior government officials, the top leadership of NSC and IM, and various leaders of Naga bodies were also present at the event. Today's agreement is a shining example of what we can achieve when we deal with each other in a spirit of equality and respect, trust and confidence when we seek to understand concerns and try to address aspirations when we leave the path of dispute and take the high road of dialogue, it is a lesson and an inspiration in our troubled world. Today, we mark not merely the end of a problem, but the beginning of a new future. While the details of the agreement were not revealed till the filing of this report, both the sides expressed hope of having arrived at a better understanding and the possibility of successful execution of the deal. The Prime Minister thanked the leaders of NSC and IM for their cooperation and assured them that peace, security and economic transformation of Northeast is a major priority of the government. He also expressed hope of a brighter future for Nagaland. Peace, security and economic transformation of Northeast has been among my highest priorities. It is also at the heart of my foreign policy, especially the Act East policy have been deeply concerned about resolving the Naga issue soon after entering office. I appointed an interlocutor for talks with the Naga leaders who not only understood the Naga people as also their aspirations and expectations, but has great affection and respect for them. The NSCN was formed in 1980 by Thunga Lang Muiva, Isaac Chishi Swu, and SS Kaplang after they split from the Naga National Council, which had been fighting for the sovereignty of the Naga people. Eight years later, the group also faced a division with Kaplang forming his own outfit, NSC and K, and Isaac and Muiva forming the IM faction. The NSC and IM has been in talks with the government since 1997 and was engaged in a ceasefire pact. Consecutive governments had been trying to reach an amicable solution on the issue by holding talks with the outfit as well as various civil society representatives and local bodies. We appreciate your wisdom, your leadership and your vision to build an enduring relationship. The Nagas will ever remember you for your statementship 
and your uh, profound understanding of the Nagas with warm heart for them. Beginning from now, the challenges will be created, so also the responsibilities. Today, to the leaders and the people of Nagaland, I say this, you will not only build a bright future of Nagaland, but your talents, traditions, and efforts will also contribute to making the nation stronger, more secure, more inclusive, and more prosperous. You are also the guardian of our eastern frontiers and our gateway to the world beyond. The Naga political issue that had been going on for over six decades had taken a huge toll on generations of Naga people. The successful conclusion of the Naga talks and the signing of the peace deal will likely usher in development and put an end to major insurgency problems in the region. There is also hope that other Northeast-based rebel outfits will follow suit and reach out to the government for resolving the conflict in a peaceful way. People in Naglan and other Naga inhabited areas were long waiting for a peaceful settlement of the decades-old Naga issue. The signing of the peace accord between the government of India and NSC and IM is being seen as a landmark decision and has been welcomed by the people from various sections of the society. The agreement signed between the government of India and NSN leadership in Delhi is welcomed by all Nagas. Nagas, I would say they are very progressive people, but because of this political issue, unresolved, has been going for a long time. And now it is the duty for everybody to bring uh, all the Nagas together uh, to have understanding and to accept whatever agreement comes about. It's a very good, very good development. We welcome it. We are very happy about it. In fact, we have been waiting for this uh, kind of uh, solution for a long, long time, long, long years. Now that it has come, we are very happy because this peace uh, settlement with uh, Nagaland, uh, between Nagaland and the government of India, will have a tremendous effect on the other parts of Northeast. We are very grateful to, first of all, to Modi, uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, and the collective leadership that they have brought about this. And the fact that the Prime Minister has recognized the uniqueness of Naga culture, Naga history, Naga strengths and weaknesses. And to acknowledge that itself is a big step for us. It was a very good news to hear that the government of India and the NSN has signed a peace treaty, or they call it a agreed framework. And uh, you know, we are very happy to learn that the 18 long years of peace talk will culminate into a negotiated settlement through a agreed uh, framework. We must be happy that an agreement has been reached. Well, they have been talking on it for last 18 years and somehow an agreement has been reached. That fact has to be appreciated. And we appreciate both the parties, uh, NSNIM and the Government of India for coming to an agreement. The administration has stepped up rescue operations in the flood-affected districts of Manipur as floods and landslides triggered by heavy rains have killed more than 20 people. Meanwhile, Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju and Donor Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh visited the state to review the affected areas and assess the relief and rehabilitation work being undertaken. We have a report. Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju and Donor Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh undertook an aerial survey of the landslide and flood-affected areas of Manipur, especially the worst-hit Chandel district. 
The union minister later revealed that Rs 8.5 crores would be sanctioned immediately from the National Disaster Response Force Fund for emergency relief work in the state and a central team will further assess the damages. It was such a big flood in Manipur and it didn't come. It came a lot of years ago, but now, in the past two or three years, there was no damage in the past two or three years. There was a lot of damage in the past two or three years. तो हमारा केंद्र की के तरफ से जो भी सहायता मुआवजा जो देंगे हम लोग देंगे और साथ में ऑपरेशन लगे हुए हैं ग्राउंड में हमारा फोर्सेस जो है पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस असम राइफल के मणिपुर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के पुलिस और प्रशासन के साथ में सब काम में लगे हुए हैं खाने का और पानी का स्वच्छ पानी और खाद्य पदार्थ का ये सही व्यवस्था हो वो बड़ी चिंता है एन की टीम यहाँ पहुँच चुकी है यहाँ के स्थानीय विधायक और तमाम राजनीतिक दलों के कार्यकर्ता राजनीतिक लकीरों से ऊपर उठ करके सहयोग कर रहे हैं Teams of the National Disaster Response Force and State Disaster Response Force, assisted by Assam Rifles troops, are carrying out rescue operations in Jomul village in Chandel district, where a severe landslide killed at least 20 people. Several houses have been destroyed and swept away in the floods and the resulting landslides in different districts of Manipur, with Thobal and Chandel being the worst affected. Massive flash floods due to continuous downpour and overflowing of rivers has inundated large tracts of area, destroying crops and property and rendering thousands homeless. Because of the heavy rainfall and because of the landslide at several places, no? to go to that place by road is completely you know, not possible. So we have asked uh, air support from India. Right? So India is... Uh, has sent a chopper yesterday, last night. So they have been airlifted from the uh, Kohati. So we have sent the first team to the place of incidents. With several rivers flowing above the danger mark, large number of people have vacated their homes and are seeking shelter at temporary relief camps set up by the state government and various social organizations. The landslides have also caused major cracks along the Imphal Moray Highway and a portion of the Nopal Sangshak Road has been washed away. A number of bridges have also been washed away, cutting off several villages and affecting communication. Sauran ayu mama dah lihat terus pada lupa lagi ni ni kisah gumba orang kat ramai ramai di pasar ni nang saya TV no bi free free slow ini thamna ni na. Amat telah tuh pun nang terbang meram di kiri no orang kat hendak kisah usia nang aku boleh bahan nadi. Kangsi telah jahan mana island si. Bahan nadi cawur besu asuki mati ti orang loh yang nak kandang kangsi telah ini thamna apa. Ising si nang kangsi kek orang pada di canggah kalau tuh ubat amat nang nang terbang. The Manipur government has announced five lakh rupees extra share each for the victims of landslide and flood. Meanwhile, the government is intensifying relief operations which have been hit due to the bad weather and lack of proper communication channels. Peace and development is the buzzword in the northeast. Let's take a quick look at some development news from the region. Delegations from India's Border Security Force and the Border Guard of Bangladesh discussed an array of border security issues at the 41st Director General level talks held in New Delhi recently. While the 22-member Bangladeshi delegation was led by BGB DG Aziz Ahmad Bijibiyama, BSF DG Devendra Kumar Patak led the Indian team. The ongoing implementation of the land swap deal featured prominently during the talks. A wide range of issues like trans-border crimes, including smuggling, illegal movement of fake Indian currency, activities of Northeast insurgent groups, prevention of illegal migration, and joint efforts for effective implementation of common agenda programs were taken up at the four-day biannual conference. Bangladesh shares a long boundary with India, especially via the Northeastern states, and both the sides have been working closely for better border management. The Tripura State Rifles Officers and Soldiers recently donated blood during a mega blood donation camp at its RK Nagar Battalion headquarters. The camp 
was organized by the 10th Battalion TSR under its Civic Action Program in association with Tripura State Blood Transfusion Board and Society. The collected blood will be used to save the lives of needy patients at civil hospital. The camp also helped in spreading awareness among TSR soldiers about HIV AIDS. As the new college sessions have begun, the All Assam Students' Union recently organized a street drama against ragging in the premises of KK Handi Girls College in Guwahati. The aim was to generate awareness among the students through the medium of art and encourage them to not engage in any such activities. The street plays were performed in other colleges as well. A month-long training program on Shumang Leela tradition and Moirang Parva festival organized by the Manipur State Shumang Leela Council and Theatre Mirror concluded recently at Iboyema Shangleng. 67 aspiring artists participated in the training camp workshop that aimed at preserving the traditional art forms of the state and popularizing it among the young generation. The participants were taught the methods of dancing, singing and performing the art as well as history and background about Shramang Leela by renowned artists and various film directors. A lot of emphasis has been given to problems faced by northeastern people residing in different cities across the country. Recently, members of parliament from the northeastern states interacted with students, civil society representatives and other people at an event in New Delhi and took stock of their problems. We take a look. Under the theme of deliberation on achieving actionable outcomes on various issues affecting Northeast people living in major cities across the country, members of parliament, activists, students and other professionals from the community came together for an interactive session in capital New Delhi recently. The meet was organized by the Northeast MPs Forum in association with the Northeast India Welfare Society in an effort to apprise the sitting MPs from the community of the various problems faced by the Northeast people in different areas. The event was attended by Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju, Union Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Sarbananda Sonawal and other members of Parliament from the Northeastern states. As far as the coming together of the Northeast community, I think this is one of the first initiatives done by the Northeast MPs Forum and it is a very good initiative on the positive side uh, because we hardly get time to come together and people from different walks of life, we have professionals, we have bureaucrats, we have ministers, we have think tanks, so I think this uh, has you know, brought all of us together and this should continue and not just end from today. It is very important you know, because for a very long time there was a gap between the Member of Parliament and the intellectuals, the people living in Delhi. So this is a very positive step to get to know each other, you know, and together we can build a better society, a Nordic society. During the event, Joint Commissioner of Delhi Police, Robin Hibu, made an elaborate presentation on crimes against northeastern people in different cities and highlighted the various steps being taken by the police to provide better security. A detailed discussion on the implementation of the recommendations of the Bisbarwa Committee formed last year to look into the issues of Northeast people in the country also took place. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju assured the gathering that the recommendations have been accepted and are in the process of being implemented. This so-called uh, committee, Bisbarwa Committee, it has recommended a long list of do's and don'ts for the government of India and when, when this committee report was accepted by myself and within very short time, within few months time, I have ensured that the entire recommendation in that report is accepted. So when I called the second meeting of the, uh, the officials, I have declared that the, the points made in the uh, committee's recommendation is accepted in total, 100% it is accepted. So the onus of responsibility to implement it comes on the Home Ministry. The MP Vajbura Committee recommendation actually covers a very wide spectrum. 
Okay, now if you go into the details of that, it actually covers almost everything that you need, right? From education, culture, traditions, security, almost everything gets covered. So our point is if that gets implemented in Bangalore at the earliest or the soonest and the local administration comply with the same, I think a lot of, lot of issues will get solved. Already there are talks of a Northeast hostel uh, under, the, under the Bangalore University, uh, which is coming up. So the land has already got allotted. So this will be a hostel exclusively for the Northeast people uh, who, who will be coming and studying at the Bangalore University. So things are happening. There was also a discussion on the memorandum submitted by Northeast MPs Forum to Prime Minister for sustainable, inclusive and holistic development of Northeast. An open interaction session allowed the participants to engage directly with the leaders and put forward their concerns and questions on core issues to them. This initiative on the part of the Northeast MPs and our uh, Lok Sabha MP uh, Shri P.S. Sangma is definitely welcome. But there are some issues, you know, which uh, at times even the MPs uh, with due respect to them may not be aware of issues that, that students, issues that people who are working face daily on a daily basis, you know, they may not be able to uh, they may not know about it. So this forum actually provides a platform, you know, of open interaction. And yes, the question and answer session was welcome because the MPs were very forthcoming towards it. That's why I believe, yes, it's a welcome step. A large number of people from the northeast region come to Delhi and other metro cities every year for better education and career opportunities. Such platforms allow people to apprise their leaders of the various problems that they face and facilitate an exchange of ideas for addressing important issues of concern. There is a huge pool of talented sports persons in the Northeast. In order to utilize the potential of the youngsters and provide them with a platform to polish their skills, several coaching camps and championships are being conducted on a regular basis. We have this report from Assam. Sweating hard to hone their skills in table tennis. Some 70 budding players from Jorhat district participated in 10 day long summer table tennis coaching camp held at Kushal Konwar Indoor Stadium in Jorhat. The players received training under three categories, beginners, learners and advanced groups. The camp was sponsored by Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, ONGC, with an aim to discover the hidden talent of the budding players from the region. We have a learner group, beginners group and also advanced table tennis group. Our motto to produce national and international TT players uh, from this Kusal Kor Memorial Indoor Stadium. This camp is giving us really nice techniques, nice workouts, nice exercise, nice warm uh, wo uh, workouts and everything new uh, which we haven't got before. So I'm really loving this camp and uh, and one day and one day I really want to become an Indian champion and I want Biman Bhagavati by my side. So this is my aim. Youth in Assam are also learning skills in outdoor sports like football. Recently, the third All-Assam Girl Under-17 District Level Football Championship was held at Nehru Stadium in Guwahati. Players from all 14 districts of Assam participated in the championship held under the aegis of Directorate of Sports and Welfare, Assam. Udalguri School, the winner of the event, will now participate in the Subrato Cup to be held in September in Delhi. This is mainly for the promotion of football among the girls' students. And actually the champion team will go to New Delhi to participate in the Subrato Cup tournament. And uh, uh, we, the directorate people, will give them coaching for about one month before going to Delhi. We feel very good because we have been here for three times. We have been here for two times. So this time, the final is very good. So we will be able to play in the morning. We have been very happy that we will be able to play in the morning. But this time, we have been full of dreams. So it's very good. 
The Northeast region is an acknowledged sporting powerhouse and providing such platforms to youngsters keen in taking sports will go a long way in harnessing the potential of the region. This will help in producing many more national and international level players. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at NEIndia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Limpim, signing off. Goodbye and take care.